All right. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 30 as we talk about experiencing the power of God. As we talk about experiencing the power of God. So this month, this, you know, it's wonderful because I just love how we are just structured. Last week we spoke about finances. I think we went from relationship and just a lot of teaching topics. There is a teaching topic, but it's going to be more challenging. It's going to be more challenging because a lot of the concept about expressing the power of God is what people know. But people just, can you just put the tires? You know, yeah, let's, let's ask for it again. You know, it's what people know and um, it's what people know, but it's what I want them to do. It's what they need to just step forward to. And you can just get Pastor Lai and Pastor Benga here into this two seat here. You know, it's what people know and but what I want them to do. All right. So, glory to God. Genesis chapter 30 verse 1. So, one of the most frustrating experiences for me as a child of God is this. Is to be, this one of the most, I don't know for you. Is to be able to know that God can do something. But in my own life, I'm not able to see what I know God can do. And many people I talk to have that frustration. So, they know that God can fix this marriage issue god can give them the man they want to marry the woman they want to marry but it's not happened for them some people have a medical report some people have a medical report that they need to change the diagnosis they need to believe that this is going to change some people have struggled with some kind of sexual behavior or addiction and they believe that the power of god can really fix this some people it's not just that they, it's, it's a contract they're believing for and although they don't know anybody in the physical, they believe that, hey, I have a lost spiritual power to turn things around. Some people, it has to do with a child. Either they want to have a child or maybe a child is sick or a child exhibits some behavior that they want to change. So this morning, what I want to talk about is this. How do you practically express the power of God in such a way that it will bring about the kind of change that you desire as a person? It's very frustrating for you to know that God can do something, but he wouldn't do it for you. It's very frustrating to believe, and you don't see the kind of results you want to see. So let's read this story in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 1. The Bible says, and when Rachel saw that she brought Jacob no children. So this is Rachel. She had expectations she would have children. Some people have expectation also that they will make profits. Some people, it's just a natural child you want. You really want a child. Some people, it's not a child they want. What they want is they want a healing. Some people, it's not a healing they want. One, they want there's a breakthrough. Some people, not the breakthrough they want. Some they want there's a wife or husband, something. The Bible says, and, and when Richard saw that she brought Jacob no child, she envied and sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or I die. And you know, it's amazing. Sometimes when people are frustrated, you may think it's you. Meanwhile, their frustration is because of something else. And this is what I will say to you. The reason most people are frustrated is this. They find themselves in a situation they're trying to change. They've done everything they can do to change it, but there is no change. So, they've done everything possible to push the business forward. There is no change. They've done everything possible to grow the profit. There is no change. They've done everything possible to fix the finance. There is no change. So they are really frustrated. So when they see other people doing well, they wonder, hey, he has to be a fraudster. Because if this thing is so easy, why is it not happening for me? The Bible says, Rachel took the anger and put it on Jacob. And what did Jacob say? Jacob's anger was kindled. He, says, he said to Jacob, he said, give me children or I die. Verse 1. And verse 2 says, and Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, am I in God's stead what? Withheld from you the fruits of the womb? And the reason, there the is, see, there is a helplessness. There is a helplessness that comes with knowing that you want something to happen, but you can make it happen. It's a, it's a terrible feeling you have. Knowing that I really need this job. I can really do this job. But to make them give me this job is out of my control. There is a helplessness that comes with that. One of the places I see people pray the most is when they're in the flights. You know why? <laughs> Once you're in the air, 
<laughs> go is smiling. What's your in the air? There is a helplessness that says, I'm here. I can't say I want to get down. I can't say the job is too rough. No matter what goes on, I'm signing for it. So there's a helplessness. And you can see Jacob experienced a helplessness. Jacob said, hey, if, if I could give it to them, won't I give it to you? And, and you know, and I understand where that comes from because sometimes it could be a woman that has a medical diagnosis and says you have a blocked fallopian tube, you have, you know, you're, you're not producing enough eggs or your husband has low sperm count or maybe, you know, or maybe, um, you know, um, it's a relationship and the guy you've did it for a long time walked out of it or you need this capital to do this other, this expansion and you can't do the expansion and there is that helplessness and you're like, hey, I don't know what he is. The reason why you feel helpless is one thing. Because sincerely, you've done everything you know to get forward and you can't get forward. And you feel helpless. And sometimes it will be, it will be something as deep as someone that has a cancer. Because it's not a minor thing. It will be someone as deep as someone that has a cancer. And listen to me. Everybody look up here. I want to say something to you. No matter what the doctors say, doctors are not God. I'm not even talking about spiritual or spiritual. There are people that did not even pray. And doctors said this will happen to them. And nothing, it didn't happen. What about we that pray? Never take a doctor. Doctors, because this is what you must understand. There's a difference between fact and truth. What is fact? Fact is what is. Truth is what's not going to change. Fact is always changing. What is a fact? There was a time that COVID didn't have a cure. Yes or no? That was a fact. Does COVID have a cure right now? Yes, it has a fear because fact is always changing. There was a time malaria was a deadly disease. Yes or no? Yes. What is it right now? Malaria is not a deadly disease. It can be treated. Fact is always changing. So when you receive a fact, it's not the final verdict. That's what I'm telling you. So if the lawyer says we cannot help you, if your banker says we cannot help you, if the doctor says we cannot help you, there's someone that can help. The Bible says with God, all things are what? All things are possible. That does a powerful testimony because sometimes when I read this testimony, they hold me, you know, they hold me still. And this testimony was a child. He had the, an eye problem. I can't remember what was wrong with the eye. I think he couldn't, he's lo- he was losing sight in one of the eyes. And the doctor, yes, yeah, that was what it was. I think, was it was, what did he have? He was losing sight and he had lost about 95% in one eye. And the doctor said, once that eye is gone totally, the sickness will move to the other one and it will lose the other eye also. It's going to be blind. And this child is just below 10 years old. So the doctor said what they had to do was to operate the eye and maybe even if they cannot remedy the eye that's bad, they can kind of, you know, stop it and it doesn't spread. And we had one of these healing services. And, you know, that's just, it's just the ability to stretch your faith. The ability to stretch your faith. If you want to see the supernatural, you must even stretch. Amen? See, supernatural things don't happen in comfort zones. That is thinking. Supernatural things don't happen in comfort zone. When you can help yourself, there's no need for God's help. So, the, the, the mother brought the child and we prayed. And the, the, the side she was in it healed up. And you know the thing? The mother went back to the hospital. And when he went back to the hospital, you know what the doctor said? The doctor said, ah, wow, this surgery was nicely done. His eye is perfect right now. Why did he do the surgery? And, and, the doctor, and the mother said, there was no surgery, doctor. This was a miracle. We went to a church we were prayed for. This was a miracle. And that's what we're talking about. How to experience the power of God. You know, um, just before the service, someone sent a message and I was being, you know, I was being, I was being shown the message. And this person had applied for this contract for the past one year and the company refused to respond. He said, I just said, join the NLP. And you spoke a word that God remember us. He said, Pastor, you don't believe it. The depot, he said, the company have applied to service their depots for one year. He said, they called me back and said, can you start next week? He said, can you start next week? Can you start next week? It, it's amazing. How does it change? That's what power does. Power knows how to change things. The reason I'm saying so is that, so while we're talking about the logical side of things, there's also the spiritual side of things. One time we prayed for people that 
then we're going to get married. And he didn't send a testimony. He said that you prayed two weeks ago. He said within the last, um, sorry, he said last month. He said with last one month, I've had the highest number of people ask me out. I was just show interest. He said, I'm wondering what's going on. These people have been there around me for a long time. I said, sometimes the barrier is not just physical, it's spiritual. But that's what power does. Power moves things. Power moves things. Hallelujah. Power moves things. Power moves things. Hallelujah. Power moves things. Power does what? Move things. Power moves things. Listen, look at these tires. These tires are going to remain this way because that's what happens. These tires remain this way. But if I get a very strong person right now, they will move the tire here. Why? Every mountain can be moved if the required power is applied. Oh my God. So the mountain is not the problem. The challenge is not the problem. It's just the required power to move it. Hey, I know you're not married. That's not the challenge. If I, if, let me give you a good example. Let, let me call someone. Where's Grace? I, I saw Grace. Grace, one of our senior music ministers here. Grace, can you come and move this tire for me? Yeah, just come. Just come. Yeah, just move it quickly. Move it over there. Move it to the keyboard stand. What? Move it to the keyboard stand. No, no, no. Move the three together. Okay, so what's the problem? Is it the tire or a capacity? Uh, what is the problem? A capacity. Can I get someone that's strong enough to move the tire? This is what you do at the gym all the time? You can move it? Come, come, my brother. Thank you. So, so, so stand, stand over there. Stand, stand. Grace, keep standing. Yeah. Move it. Bakata. Hold on, hold on. Grace, just move a little. Come on, move a little. Hold on. Move, 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 no, move it. Yeah, yeah. You can move it back. Move it any way you want. So, so this is the thing. You keep talking about the mountain you're talking about the wrong thing talk about the power to move the mountain you keep talking about what the doctor said you're talking about the wrong thing talk about the power to reverse what the doctor said you keep talking about the downturn economy you're talking about the wrong thing talk about the power that sets men on top he says when all the sinners are cast down he said we shall say there's a lifting up you keep talking about the barrenness talk about the power of god that converts barren to fruitful you keep talking about the sickness talk about the healing power of god don't tell god don't stop taking god about your mountain start talking to your mountain about the living god glory to god can i have more volumes on the micro on the monitors i don't want to lose my voice it's hallelujah you keep talking people keep telling god about their mountain they keep telling god that oh this is how my marriage is my marriage is so bad that's a problem in my marriage my husband is a drunk my wife is this and this is that he said i know keep telling me stop telling god about your mountain start telling your mountain how big your god is so ha huh? come try to move it again this is unmovable but to him brother move it not by power not by might by the spirit says the lord what could not move is moving they say you can't have a baby but we are moving that they say you can't become a millionaire we are moving that they say you can't get married we are moving that they say the cancer can't be healed we are moving that they say you can't get a job we are moving that they say the countdown will not come we are moving that they say you don't get a good husband we are moving that how can you move that how can you move that he says it's not by power it's not by might by the spirit says the lord they say it's autism is not healed it's not treatable but god can change that they say it's a follow to us blocked, but God can change that. They said the fun can come, that the contract cancel, but God can change that. Don't doubt the power of God. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. If I should use on today so I don't break my voice. I added it tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Oh wow. The frustration is always there when you feel 
I need to move something. So this was the first. It is how she was frustrated. You know, Grace, will you try to move it again? I want to see the frustration. Try to move it again. Try to move the tires. Yeah. You see? She's thinking, do I go from the top? Is it the bottom? Is it the center? Is it this? Listen to me. If you're pushing too much and it's not working, retreat. <laughs> Someone said, why retreat? Because we need to change the power dynamics. <laughs> the power dynamics needs to change. Mountains don't respond to physical energies. Ah, the language the oppressor understands is the language of power. And I'm saying this because there's a generation where there's a generation where people are cutting soap. And the reason why they're cutting soap is that they feel as if there's something about the power of God that is slow. There's something about the power of God that is failing. But there's nothing about that. People say that if, it, if God will not help me, I will help myself. Listen to me. If God can't help you, you can't help yourself. So let's keep reading. <laughs> Verse um, Genesis chapter 30. Thank you, ma'am. Verse 2. And Jacob's anger was killed against Rachel because, oh my God, ladies, you need to marry a man that when you're troubled, the man will say, I heard the voice of God. Not the man that you say, We have trouble. He says, I'm also clueless. Wife is crying, husband is crying. No, men, you have to stand up to become a prophet or priest. That when your wife comes with a challenge, you said, I had I had heaven. There's a revelation I have in my spirit. Listen to me. People men always say, I want a praying wife. It's listen to me. It takes a praying husband to have a praying wife. And listen to me, if you're not a praying husband, a praying wife cannot cover your responsibility because the priesthood of the family lies on the shoulder of the man. Glory to God. So, stop some Asana and Man you time. Stop some Channel's News time. And get on your knees and do some spiritual warfare. And release some authority and change some things in the spirit. I talk about, listen to me. When your wife knows you hear God. You know, one time I told my wife. I'm not even sure what, 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 there were two times. There were two periods. I, I, um, let me see. Peter? Is Peter over there? I have all this problem with the sound on the stage. Can you help me fix it? So, my kids, you know, I, I think they were playing with some other kids. So, you know, one of the times we sat, so I, I saw one of their friends, it, maybe their classmates or friends, I'm never going to show the story now. And um, I just, because I was, I'm not very familiar with, their, with those, um, the ones I saw. So I just leaned to my wife, I said, hey, that girl, because there was a particular, I was a girl, I said, that particular person, I said, who is she? You know, am I, oh, this is, I said, oh, I said, well, why? I said, there's something wrong with her. He said, what, like what? I said, spiritually, there's something wrong with her. You know, I said, I can just see that there's something wrong with her because this is like in sports, not that they're doing. And she said, ah. So, well, we got back. She began to tell me that, you know, that, you know, they, I think they moved up from another school. Her, her parents are tired and she's just young, below 10, and she has all these challenges. But I didn't even know that. I just saw her for the first time. I'm like, there's something wrong because I could just see there was another presence influencing her. Glory to God. But that's what you need to do as a man. What you can discern. What you can discern. Where you can discern things and say, okay, this is what I discern. And that, dis that discernment has been proven to be true over and over and over again. The Bible says it. And this is a bad thing about being helpless. Verse 3. When people are helpless... It's not just affect them. They begin to go to places they should never seek help from. That's where they go. If you, if you can use my hand free, tell me so that I can. I can use the hand free. Okay. Thank you.
and she shall bear upon her knees that I may have children by her. See, when people are helpless, they begin to take alternatives that ruin them. Have you seen people that sneak into doing cocaine just because they have a family problem? Have you seen people that become a drunkard just because they have a challenge? And that's why, see, the reason I'm teaching this is this. This is the reason I'm teaching this. When people feel they're helpless and they need some kind of touch, they're either going to look for substance to aid their emotions because their emotions are down, or they're going to look for the negative supernatural and look for some witch doctor, some 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 goma, some 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 habilis to do them some concussions. Do you imagine what Rachel said? Rachel said, Since I can't have a child from a state of helplessness, he says, sleep with my maid. She gave an alternative that was just crushing. Your problems will not destroy your life. Ah. It's in Africa you hear that someone has a monetary problem and uses his wife and children for rituals. It's not common. In recent times, I've heard about people that disappear. And some of those people, they are sold. Some of these people are dismembered and their body organs are sold. Some of them are used for purely rituals. And you wonder where did our humanity come to that people see you don't know it's a lot of helplessness for you to think the way to make money is to kill another human being it's a terrible state of mind i've seen people i've seen you know i heard a story a long time ago when i was a student and it was about this christian guy and the Christian guy had the problem. I want to see a herbalist. And the herbalist, you know, and the herbalist was, was in the room. And the herbalist said, you know what? This problem is how we're going to solve it. When I leave you, a snake, some like a snake or some animal is going to come. He said, it's either you're going to beat it or do something. Or you would have to, um, or it will kill you. It's one of the two. But whoever succeeds, it's meant to be a simple thing. But somehow, when the Christian guy saw this animal or the snake, for some time, he just felt overwhelmed and he couldn't do anything. And the dick began to attack him and he was going to die. All of a sudden, the Christian guy began to speak in tongues. The, the snake paralyzed and literally just broke down, something like that. I'm not sure the story exactly. The hammerlist ran out of where he was and he says, What did you do? He said, ah, When I was helpless, I began to pray the way I know how to pray. You know, you, you, you know what the hammerlist said? The hammerlist said that you are an idiot. You have this kind of power, you're coming here. What you just did now, the whole powerhouse was shaking. He said, you're coming here. Why am I saying that to you? They are no powerless Christians. They are only Christians that don't, are not aware they have power. And why do they feel powerless? Because the situation of life overwhelms them and they forget what they have. They are no powerless Christians. They are only Christians that are not aware they have power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let's read that quickly. Oh, because sometimes you hear you hear those songs people sing and this is what they say. They say, give me power. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Once you have the Holy Ghost, you have power. Sir. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. See what the Bible says. Uh-huh. <laughs> it says, it says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh my God. And you shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in all Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Hey, this is what it's saying. It said, You will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be a witness. Let's start. There are so many things to say here. Firstly, who is a witness? The witness is the one that has proof. Hey. What does the Holy Ghost come to do to make you a proof producer? Right, let me say that again. What does the Holy Ghost come to do to make you what a proof producer? What proof? The proof that God's power exists. God says, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will become a proof producer. You will not be a talker. You will be producing proofs that shows that God's grace is available. That shows that God answer prayer. Somebody say hallelujah. That's what the Holy Ghost comes to do. How does it do that? When others are in an industry, and things are very difficult. All of a sudden, you produce a result. Everybody says, what? You say, I'm a proof producer. The spirit I have on the inside is able to produce proof, sir. Who is a witness? A witness is someone that can produce proof, sir. 
Holy Ghost says, when I come upon you, what I do in your life is that I give you the ability to produce fruit. People cannot see God, but there are things that will happen in your life. They will not argue there is God. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. The reason why your friend have not asked you for your church is your fault. You have not produced proof that shows that you have answer prayers. There's a way you produce proof. People that are close to you say, sorry, how do you pray? You know, one lady told me in this church, he said, Pastor, have you seen my whole family still coming? I said, I noticed. He said, even my mother, that doesn't understand Pentecostalism, my mother is almost 80. She's an Anglican. He said, my mother said, God answers in your church. I've seen it in your life. The few times I've gone, I've seen it in my own life also. Because that's what the Holy Ghost comes to do. He comes to make you proof. He comes to make you what? A proof what? Producer. Say, I'm a proof producer. That's so weak. Say, I'm a proof producer. Say, I'm a proof producer. Lift up your hands towards heaven, everyone. I want to pray a prayer. And this is a prayer I'm going to pray from today. Let things happen in my business, in my finance, in my job uh, that will show the whole world that my God answers prayers. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I uh, begin to declare, I call for result. Uh, I call for result uh, that shows that God answers prayers. I call for result uh, that shows that God answers. Let things begin to happen. Uh, shock the doctor with me. Uh, shock my neighbors with me. Shock my friends with me. I told her, I want to hear you pray. Uh, I want to lift up those tongues and pray. Oh God, do something, do something. Let something call for the result, call for the testimony. All of you online, don't just watch. This is your time to pray. That call for something, my father. Call for something. Antone yeteka. Sile, sile, sile. So de poko shila ha. Pa shile tombo kotena ha. Ito, shock the world with my testimony. Shock my value, my testimony. Let my testimony be one of a kind. Let my friends see it. Let my neighbors see it. Let them be able to know that this is not the work of man. This is the work of God. All of you watching online, I want to place your hand on your chest and say, this is what I'm believing for in this season. I'm believing for testimonies of what only God can do. Testimonies of all only God can do. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says it's not my power. Ah, we are believing huh, that many God's situations will reverse. We are believing that approvals will come through. We are believing that policies will change in your favor. We are believing you have proofs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Can I prophesy for you today? Oh, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says when the Lord turned around the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. It says, then the hidden, the outside that said, it said, the Lord has done great things for them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In this season, people will say that about you. In this season, people will say that about your business. In this season, people will say that about your family. In this season, they will say that about your job. They will say that about your business. There will be a total change. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You have become the candidate that God will surprise the world through. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say it's mine. Say it's mine. Say it's mine. Hallelujah. Please, you can have your seat. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> I love the story of pharaoh and the sons and, and and moses when moses did the first miracle when moses did the first miracle let me just turn this off because i have this feedback when moses did the first miracle <laughs> pharaoh said big deal he called the magicians they did their own when he did the second one pharaoh said oh so you thought that's a big deal he called the magician they did their own when he did the third miracle, he said, <laughs> that's a big deal. Hey, God, they did their own. 
The fourth one, he did it. He called the magician. The magician couldn't. The magician said, Sir, this is the finger of God. Don't fight it. There are things even magicians will say, This is the finger of God. That will be the kind of testimony you'll be having. Listen, your friends that don't come to church or know Christ will look at you and be like, show me the way. They will say, show me the way. They will say, show me the way. During NLP, one guy sent a testimony. They had done a, they had done a business for one of the governors. And for some reason, the governor refused to pay or pick up their calls again as soon as they concluded the contract. And they were owing them several hundreds of millions. And so, during the NLP, as I was ministering, I said to someone at this crash station, I said, the Spirit of God said, take a step of it, go back and ask them. Because he didn't have the direct contact. His partner had the direct contact with the governor. He said, he called his partner and says, please, go back and ask. He said that, I've called him nothing less than 100 times. He has not picked up or replied by mail. What to change now? He said, my pastor had the prophetic word. He said, we should go back and ask. The guy said, well, it will not do harm to ask. Sent a message. Governor called back. He said, I'm so sorry. I've been so distracted. I don't know how I forgot. He said, pick up your check next week. When they came to pick up their check, they said, but we also have extra job for you. Do one, two, three, four, five again. They picked up the money, cleared the job, all those things. The guy sent him and said, the guy, the partner told that our NLP member, he said, the Baba that you use, can I know him? That Baba is very hot. He's very hot. What? I said, it's not Baba. It's Baba God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the one that opens the door and no man can shut it. It's the one that shuts the door and no man can what? Open it. So, one of the things you must know is this, because we Pentecostals, we, we, we emphasize tongues a lot, which is great. But one of the reasons why the Holy Ghost comes into your life is to produce, is to make you a weakness. A weakness is the one that has proof. So after today's service, maybe you want to put it on your status. I'm a proof producer. I'm a proof producer. I have proofs that God's power work. I have proofs that grace is available. They are cutting, so we are cutting grace. I have proofs. I have proofs. My life is proofs of answer prayer. My home is proof of answer prayer. The proofs are in my children. I don't hear your amen. The proofs are in my children. The proofs are in my job. The proofs are in my family. The proofs are in my state. The proofs are all over. Say amen somebody. Glory to God. But see what it says. It says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So this is why I said to you, there's no powerless Christian. You know why? Because you can't have the Holy Ghost and not have power. Because the custodian of spiritual power is the Holy Spirit. Uh-uh. You, it's just, you, know, the law, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of nonsense we say sometimes. We say that, um, um, is a powerless Christian. A powerless Christian. A no, 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 no. A powerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A powerless Christian is an unactivated Christian. Because, uh, maybe I'll teach about next week. There are four words in the Greek that Paul uses for power in Ephesians. And one of the words is, um, one of the words is exousia. Another one is dunamis. Another one is iskos. Another one is enigia. And one of the words says, one of the words helps us realize that when a Christian has power, it's like latent power. It's what power has to be converted into reality. So, it, latent power can be changed into reality. That's why you're here according to the power at work in me. See, there's power but what works is another expression of the power on the inside. So, the power on the inside is dynamis, but the outworking of that power, the limit of that outworking is based on enigia. And enigia is produced, enigia is activated to prayer. These are dimensions. Sir. But we will leave for today. Let's just stay on the surface. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Ha. How do I experience the power of God personally? Psalm 63 verse 1. 
this is good. How do I experience the power of God personally? Can I have more volume on this microphone? Just on the money. It's the monitors I need to be louder, really. Psalm 63 verse 1. What does it say? It says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirst for thee. My flesh longs for thee. In a dry and a thirsty land where no water is. He says to see thy glory. To see thy power. He says, he says this is the way it works. Power flows to the hungry. You know what I noticed about Christianity all my years in Christianity? Not every Christian has worked the power work because not every Christian is hungry for it. Some Christians are just okay with coming to church with nice makeup. Have you noticed that? Some Christians are okay for Sunday, Sunday. I've, I've noticed they're okay for all of those things. One time, one, one lady said, one lady said, Pastor, they told me that my house up is, 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 is a witch. He said, I just knelt down, begged down, gave her money and said, please leave us alone and go. We pay you in advance. We are not fighting you. We just want to release you. I said, bring her to me. Ah, how did Moses know that power and power jam power? Let's start power and go bow. Ah, every time they say which wizard, you know, some of you are so ridiculous. They tie red rope somewhere, put cowrie there. You're afraid of it. For what? You don't know what you believe. People that believe negative power, the way they are bold about it, you will hear them say, What can you do? Because they know what to believe. But it seems as if we don't know what to believe. Hey, it's amazing. Sometimes I see those things. You know, they will put some leaves and put red cloth and put cowry. So they what, 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 what my own? Did I, did I say, do I want, do I want to buy cloth? Do I want to buy cloth? Am I looking for cowry? I didn't move the cowry and walk past. You know, when I was younger, I used to pray on the road. So my mother would say, I should be careful of going out early. He said, the reason why is that people, you know, in those days when I was younger, people would take um, this calabash and put sacrifice on some junctions in Africa. I don't know if you've experienced that kind of thing before. So I say, I should be careful not to look at it. Well, don't look at it. Even I had a dog, I used to feed the dog from there. What do they eat? He said, this food is for idols. Where are the idols? We are here. He said, are we not gods? Is that not what the Bible says? Eat. If they are eating their food, will it be left here? But the idols are nothing. But I notice in church, they're always two dimensional Christians. They're just, I just want, they just, let me just get it. No! Uh, this thing, if you want to taste power, this power is for those who are hungry. Any small thing, you're looking for pastor to pray for you. Why? You keep on visiting mountain to mountain, prophet to prophet. No! You should be the person that people are coming to for prayers. The Bible says in James 5 that if anyone is sick, let him come for the elders. How do you know the senior in the church? They don't look for prayer. They won't pray for others. That's how you know the seniors. They are not the ones looking for prayer. They are the ones praying for others. When my second child, at some point he had a problem with his speech and my wife was very concerned. I didn't even think of looking for prayer. I just told my wife, it's okay. The seat of the just is blessed. You don't understand. He says, you shall receive power. He was not exaggerating. He was not making a false promise. He was not saying, of, he said, you shall receive power. What is power? Dunamis. What is tubamis? Raw power. Raw energy. Hey, dunamis is where the word dynamite is made from. He says, you shall receive explosive power. Explosive power. Power to cause changes. Are you here? That's what he promised us. But the first thing is this, he's the thirst. Before you go for the business meeting, you've arranged the papers, you've arranged everything. You just enter one room. What do you want to do? You want to say to them. How do you say to them? When the word of the king is there is power. You say to them. By the time you get there, say, ah, Mr. John, we've been waiting for you. Everybody wonder why everybody's disposed towards you. You because they've been settled. They've been sorted out in the spirit. One politician called me. He said, Pastor, there's a strange thing that goes on. He said, and he walks with one of the big governors. He said, me and the governor will sit down and take a decision. He said, some will see the governor and the governor will not remember everything we said and take another decision. Ah, 
I said, they've spoken to him from a realm. He can't say no. Oh, yeah. They've spoken to him from a realm. He can't say no. It's, it's not amazing that one of the celebrity musicians in our church was telling me that some musicians now make incisions on their tongue so that when they sing or do comedy, their comedy can be appealing to people. They say Yahoo Yahoo boys, that's called Yahoo Plus now. He says when they are pressing the computer, they will put tortoise on the leg so that, you know, the person on that will be under a certain influence. If they can be using all this fake small, small power, what about us that have the supreme power? Hey, what about us that have the power of the Holy Ghost? The problem is that we are not thirsty for our own. We want to be, we are so intellectual. That, and this is what the Bible says, First, First Corinthians 2, 4. Paul says, my preaching was not in enticing words of men's wisdom. He said, there's a place of talking. There's a place of intelligence. But with our intelligence, let's use the supernatural to back it up. Let's back it up with the supernatural. Why do you think we pray? Because the supernatural will always give you one edge. Test! 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. What does it say? How do you work in the supernatural? It says, follow after charity. And what? Do you notice he didn't say pray first? He said, desire. He said, he said, in the realm of the spirit, test is a currency. Ah. On earth, we use dollars and pounds to buy things. In the realm of the spirit, test is a currency. He said, blessed are those that hunger and test, for they shall be filled. Isaiah 55, let him that is hungry come, and he shall be filled. Test is a currency. Test is a currency in the spirit. Thirsty people attract divine attention. But when you're so, you know, um, you, know, you know, when it comes to fasting, I'm not that kind of person, you know, or, you know, because when I fast, because, you know, I have to concentrate at work. I have like a headache. So, <laughs> you're not thirsty, sir. <laughs> it's the power, is not you. It's the power can manifest that way. <laughs> the power can manifest that way. You say, you know, um, yeah, because, you know, um, <laughs> thirsty people. I've been seeing people hungry people. When people are hungry, they leave fork and use spoon. He said, no, take fork. He said, no, 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 give me this one. Because the way they read we need to eat this food, we don't want fork. Food, sir. Spoon. Even some people just give me hand. They say, no, no, this is the this is swallow and the fork. He said, no, 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 don't worry about fork. Just bring water. Because it will not go very well right now. When you're not hungry, you even say, let me use a knife. You cut it, you cut it. You like, even have a conversation. So, how, how was it? You're, oh, yeah. You, you think so? Oh, wow. When you're hungry, by the time you finish eating, I say, hey, what were you trying to tell me? <laughs> Why? Because spiritual hunger is visible. Listen to me. When you come to church, you can tell those that are hungry. It's not about rain. It's not about this. They are there. Every opportunity to have the world, they are there. They say, um, we have road track after the service. Someone says, my time. You are not hungry. When you are hungry, time is not a time. See, time is investment for spiritual things. Next step of prayer. I don't wake up early. Who used to wake up early? Good question. Who used to wake up early? The second thing about hunger, or hunger is this. Hunger reflects in separation. Hunger reflects in separation. Proverbs, I think Proverbs 18 says, a man through desire separated himself. You know, uh, find me that scripture right now. A man through desire separated himself to intermeddle with all wisdom. See, once you are hungry, you are not going to do what other people are doing. Some will say, you know, uh, you know, I'm just at home and you're at this time, you know, because of this and that. Uh, 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 uh. We are hungry, sir. Hungry, sir. When I began to read of the power of God, I will go into, I will take spiritual books into a library. One day the librarian came and said, what exam are you studying for? I said, no exam. I'm just reading the Bible. He said, really? And you come here five times in a day with different books? I said, there's something I want to see. There's something I want to know. There's something I want to feel. How many Christian books do you have? None. Not even Christian CD. None. Even the Sunday, it's one Sunday. Ah. I traveled. I traveled. There's a place I heard that the power of God moves. I said, 
People stand up from wheelchair. People stand up for beds. I traveled there to Johannesburg. I was, I didn't know where I was. In winter, it was cold. They finished with it 3 a.m. Cold. I, I didn't feel bad. How can I feel bad? I came hungry. We sat in one of the meetings from 4 p.m. We sat till 4 a.m. I didn't know how cold it can get in South Africa that time. Cold! It was, and I just wore shirt and tie. And they said, come to church on Sunday. They said, no, um, I have some other things. You are not hungry. And, and yet you want to push things in your marriage. And yet you want to push things in your finance. And yet you want to push things in your job. Someone says, but not everybody is using prayer. But do you know what they're using? Are they giving you their own? If you, if you don't know their key, use your own key. Hunger reflects in sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5. It says, it says, gather unto me my saints that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. Hunger reflects in sacrifice. There are many Christians that cannot humble themselves. They cannot sacrifice themselves. You know what hunger does? Oh my God. What hunger does is this. I'm so hungry sometimes. See, when I say hungry, you're not hungry. You're hungry for God. Power flows to the lovers of God, sir. He said, I found David a man after my heart. See, young Christians, new Christians, they are the ones that need prayer points. The real deep Christians, they have no need for prayer points. You know why? Prayer is not about what God does for us. It's about staying in His presence. Oh, it's about, that's what prayer is. It's not about Lord, I need a husband, I need a contract, I need a job. That's not what prayer is. Well, you know what prayer is. The people that are really hungry, it's not about that. It's about, listen, a prayer is about what you need from God. Jesus prayed all night. What was he praying for? Jesus prayed. What? Was he praying for power? He was power. Was he praying for wisdom? He was wisdom. What was he praying for? Let me just fellowship with my father. <laughs> Let me just fellowship with my father. Prayer is about, hey, ah, ta, ta. There, there are songs and there are songs. Wonderful songs. Are, Lord, do this. But there are songs. You just say, how great the world. How great the world. Oh, Lord, my God. And, and you're just talking about the greatness of God the, the, the power of God the wisdom of God you're just thinking about how great this our God is you were awesome in this place mighty God hey you were awesome in this place ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Abba Father you are worthy of our praise to you our hands we raise. Someone says, why did they say always lift up your hands? First of all, 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, I wish men everywhere praying, lifting up their hands towards heaven. That's what the Bible says. But why we lift up our hands as this? Father, I surrender. That's the first reason. Secondly, Father, I embrace you. Give me a hug from heaven. Hiya, ta, ta, ta. Wait, my, my brother, come. My brother, come. My brother, come. Come, 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 come. Did you see that? Once he saw me raise my hand, he raised my hand. I raised my hands to him, raised my hands towards me, Lord. That's what he is. Have you seen the baby going this way? You run towards the baby and you hug the baby. Ah, what are you hungry for? Some of you want to use God. You want to use God to get married. Say, yes, once he does it, you stop praying. That's the thing. God knows what you're looking for. God says, so, so, all of, all of you are very smart. This is what you do. Once you want to pray, Father, you are the greatest. You are the mightiest. You are this. You are that. You are this. God says, say what you want. Because God knows our thoughts. He said, Lord, you know, I love you. He said, is your marital problem? Say it. Do you know what it means to come to God's presence without agenda? And you say, here am I. You say, for what? To worship you. Here am I to worship. <laughs> Choir, help me. <laughs> Bow down. No more, no. All together. We're all together. All together. All together. All together. All together, wonderful.
Gabriel says, Gabriel says, hey, 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 what do you want? Hey, Gabriel says, what do you want? You look at Gabriel. Here am I to worship. Here am I to bow And why you say that? Gabriel says, if that's what you want, let's do it together. <laughs> because I want to worship. I want to pray. I want to experience God. I want God to touch me. I want God to touch me. Hey! 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 hey. No one that Matthew says seek ye first, not seek ye second. He says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added. You want to see the power of God? He comes with a genuine test for Jehovah himself. Why you say, Lord, there's nothing I want more than you. Oh Lord, some people say, hey, you know, I'm at home because it's church. Listen to me, you can go to the office, your kids can go to school, they can't come to church. There's something wrong with that explanation. Ah, so many of you are here and God is saying, God is saying, take a next step spiritually. Join a small group, lead a small group. And you're saying, Lord, I can't. That's not the way hungry people talk. Hungry people say, what do you want me to do? Jump. How high do you want me to jump? Tell me to jump, tell me how high. Because it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. All about you. It's all about you. To, it's time to leave the gift and seek the giver. It's time to go deeper. It's time to go deeper. Don't lose it. It's time to go deeper. It's time to know God. The woman said, the woman said, I want water. You know, God said, Jesus said, you don't want water. What you want is deeper than water. That's why you've been married five years. Your, your diagnosis is wrong. What you want is something deeper. You know the secret of the richest man that the Bible recorded called it Solomon? God appeared to Solomon and said, Solomon, what do you want? Solomon said, I want what you want. Wisdom. God says, because you didn't ask for the other things, you asked for what is precious to me. I will give you that and the other things others are asking for. Let them keep looking for husband. Let them keep looking for breakthrough. You'll be looking for God. You know why? You know why? You know why? <laughs> Once you find God, you find everything. Let's stand up and pray, everyone.